name is Lauren Brin. I'm the Assistant Commissioner of the MIAA, and I'm very excited to be here today with Erin Daxson from St. Mary's. Erin, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? Good. Tell me a little bit about yourself. So, yeah, I'm a senior. I play lacrosse at St. Mary's College of Notre Dame. Um, I'm from California. Um, I grew up in a military family, so I've moved all over the country, um, gotten used to a lot of different types of lacrosse play, a lot of different friends. So, I've been very lucky to um, be able to experience a lot of uh, the world around me and just bring all that into what I'm trying to accomplish today with um, lacrosse, academics, and whatnot. And with that, I am going into nursing as well for my academics. Obviously, you've had plenty of time within the MIAA. Tell me some of your favorite things about competing in this conference. So the MIAA is a great conference. I believe that there is support in every sport, men and women. We're just such a tight-knit community. You know, we have those um, respectful competitions, but then at the end of the day, you know, we're rooting for Hope basketball, trying basketball, you know, or football and whatnot, um, along with those friendly uh, challenges with games as well. So we're all very... Um, close and uh, supportive of one another. What made you choose Division Three specifically? What makes D3 special to you? So D3 is special to me because specifically, at least for St. Mary's, and I'm sure with all the other D3 schools, they highly value your academics and anything you want to achieve in your accomplishments. Coach Long always says academics comes first. And I love that because lacrosse isn't going to take you 50 years down the road with D3, most likely. Whereas your academics, you can achieve whatever you want to do with your dreams, whatever you want to accomplish with your organizations that you start. Um, they highly support that. And then they also bring that intensity of that sport as well, because you are playing at a high level still, you know, but you're also a student first, you're a person first, you have dreams first. I'm sure you're pretty busy between your sport and academics, but what hobbies do you have outside of that? I love to be outside. My family has a boat and growing up all over, like I had said, we lived in Maryland. So we'd always go on the Chesapeake. I love wakeboarding. I love wake surfing, uh, tubing, snowboarding. I love all those activities. And then of course, hanging out with my friends, whether we go to Chicago or just go hang out at the mall and whatnot. Um, and obviously I love to have my downtime. I love to draw. I love to listen and find new music and stuff and watch Netflix, of course. Your coach mentioned that you're a SAC rep at St. Mary's. What has been your favorite part about being involved in SAC? SAC has been great because it has allowed me to um, involve myself with the other athletes at my school. Um, our schedules are so rigorous. We don't get to see each other as much as we'd like to. So meeting, you know, once every other week, we get to talk about our schedules, you know, plan things together. Like we planned the National Girls and Women's Sports Day. That was really fun. Um, we planned health fairs. Uh, we do um, student body things, you know, whether it be t-shirts, fundraisers and whatnot. So basically we all just get together, have fun, collab, you know, laugh and whatnot. Um, so it's a really great time just to be able to finally put academics away for a second and just focus on each other and how they're doing in their lives. Your coach mentioned that you're an ambassador for Morgan's Message. For those who are unfamiliar with this organization, just tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, so Morgan's Message is a national mental health foundation founded by um, the family of Morgan Rogers, who was a Duke lacrosse player who um, unfortunately passed away in 2019 uh, to mental health. So what this organization does is it's great. It brings um, student athletes or just anyone in general from high schools and even colleges to sign up and become an ambassador for their school where they can connect with other ambassadors and liaisons and other individuals within the organization to bring mental health tools and discussions onto their respected campus. You know, I think our society has gotten a little bit better about discussing mental health, but there's still a stigma surrounding um, mental health, specifically in athletes. Why was it important to you to be to become a part of this organization and to help reduce that stigma? Yeah, so um, personally, I deal with mental health. You know, a lot of people deal with it. It's just, you know, people keep a facade on their face and hide it. And um, first, I had a close friend and classmate of mine um, pass away by mental health last year. And that really lit a fire under me to be like, I need to do this not only for myself, but for my friends and my classmates and fellow teammates around me, because 
this is a problem. And unfortunately, you know, that stigma is getting better. And I feel like we see it more when these tragic events do happen, like immediately afterwards. But it needs to be a year round thing, you know, 12 months total, you know, 24 hours a day. Um, so with that is not only helping me realize I'm not the only one, I can't do this by myself. I can't push it under the rug. I need to show that help does not show that you are weak. It shows you're actually strong. And so we can stop having these tragedies because while they're awful, it means that there's still more work to be done. So we don't have to keep doing it as soon as something happens. So your coach mentioned that you guys do mental health Mondays. How did your team start doing that? So we do a uh, mental uh, game Fridays where we talk about the mental part of sports. And then uh, my coach, she's been phenomenal. She's been so supportive of me with Morgan's message and everything I'm trying to do on this campus because I just started it. So I'm still like trying to get my bearings. And she had just texted me one day. She's like, hey, I would like to bring your mental health um, into our practices and our game plan and whatnot, because it doesn't even revolve around athletics. I want to get even just students in general involved. So with Mental Health Mondays, it's every Monday, and we talk about different um, things and how to approach them just in your everyday life. So we've discussed healthy sleeping habits, you know, especially with student athletes, because we're not getting enough sleep. I can tell us all right now. Um, study tips, of course, we have rigorous schedules, um, burnout and stress, again, going with that studying and whatnot. Um, I've had counselors come in to discuss what to expect with a, um, like a first session and, you know, what can you do from there? And then I've also had our athletic trainer come in and discuss, you know, the mental aspect of injuries. I mean, the topics are endless. So we just have stuff lined up to discuss with the team, bringing people in. I think next week we have someone coming in to talk about healthy eating, you know, not even for athletes, but like I said, just in general, you know. So that's been um, really good. And it's very collaborative. We have questions, people make comments, you know, people offer advice. Like it's really eye-opening for all of us. Like, whoa, like you really put in perspective for me. This is great. Thank you so much for doing this, you know. How have you seen this affect, you know, not only the individuals, but also the team dynamic as well? Yeah, so I have people ask me all the time to send me the notes I have, you know, I'll type them up or I'll get them from my Morgan's message liaison and share them with them, you know, and I'll even share them with like other coaches here too. So um, they really like that. They love hearing the study tips. We're all sharing, you know, study tips or not. Uh, we keep each other accountable. We have our accountability partners. But on top of that, I think just as a team as a whole, we're always like, you know, who make sure you get your, you know, eight hours of sleep, make sure, you know, you're eating a healthy meal, drink water, and not the day before a game, but like start three days before a game, you know, we're always reminding each other, always looking back at those notes I share, those notes that are offered by the school as well. And just really um, making sure everyone's okay mentally and physically as well, because it is hard to be a student athlete. And sometimes we forget that and we forget that we're people first, we forget self care as well. So making sure we're accountable for each other and following all of these tools that are being provided is um, necessary for us. I like closing out each interview with kind of a fun question. You said you've lived many places, you've traveled. Where has been your favorite place to visit? Oh, uh, definitely California. That um, was amazing. I went high school sophomore through senior there, senior year there. So being able to grow up just to hop in my car go to the beach. I was lucky. I lived like 10 minutes from Malibu. So being able to like, just go to Malibu, you know, sit on the beach with my friends, you know, get frozen yogurt. Um, I've met famous people like Jack Black. He FaceTimed me while I was making a pizza one time. And that was no way. Amazing. Yes. Like it was so funny. I think I almost dropped the pizza in the oven too. I was so <laughs> starstruck. And then I was lucky enough to meet him in person the following year and joke about that. Um, being able to go to LA and just see things that I wouldn't have been able to see if it weren't for uh, my parents being able to provide for my brother and I, my dad being able to make the choices he did for his uh, family to experience all of these neat things. I love it. Well, Erin, thank you so much for sharing your story and for taking the time to speak with me today and best of luck to you and your team this season. Thank you so much. And thank you for your time as well.